Anthony, congratulations. You can feel the importance of that win. So, that was all him. Um, but yeah, what, what a player and more importantly, what a person. That win takes you sixth in the Premier League now. How important is it to you and this team to be back in Europe again next season? It's massive because we've had that taste. Um, and that's what we want. That's what we want our season next year to be. And there's still a long way to go, but I think performance, performances like that won't put us far wrong. Well done today, Anthony. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And we're delighted to say that the man who got two goals today, Alexander Isak, is alongside us. Alexander, we heard from Anthony Gordon at the end. He was saying you had to play differently today in this game against Tottenham. Just tell us how well you executed the manager's game plan as a team today. No, I think great. Um, normally we just pressure uh, all the time, but the game plan was a bit different. And I think uh, the way the, the, the manager and his coaching staff set up the, the plan, I think it was excellent. And obviously then we, we executed it in a, in a good way as well. You know, you, the, the goals for me, we were talking upstairs going, well, it, it feels like when you get in 1v1 especially, that the, the game slows down a little bit and everything's very clear for you. Does that, is that the way it feels when you get some people, that, like myself, centre-half gets in, it's a blur. <laughs> yeah. Everything's going too fast. Yeah, I know. And I think... Uh, it's a lot of responsibility, you know, because we're going man-man uh, everywhere. And I think today we've done great, but uh, obviously when we win the ball, uh, there's, there's so many chances. But I mean, when you're 1v1 on the goalkeeper, ah, okay, okay. is mm. it very clear for you? It's slow or is it, is it, is it, that looks like that it looks for you. It looks so easy for you when you get 1v1. Um, yeah, I think because cause they play a high, high back line, so mm. there's a lot of space and obviously it goes quicker. Uh, and I think I've been looking at myself as well with videos and when I look at myself, it looks like, I'm more calm than I am. Uh, it obviously, goes goes <laughs> quick and uh, um, so inside the heart's doing this, but it looks you like just it's don't just don't show chill. it. Now it feels like it's going super fast on the pitch, but then when I look back at myself, uh, it feels <laughs> like I have all the time in the world. And it's, obviously, your finishing was was first class today, but how good's Bruno Guimaraes or with the pass? You, you you talk about the high line. Your run was fantastic to mm. stay on side, but yeah, yeah. not many people can play a pass like that for you. No, I think I think he's excellent. Uh, mm. In all uh, phases of the pitch, I think uh, mm. we were speaking about there was one time in the first half when I went deep and, and he played me short, but mm. you know, they, they have a, a high back line and so you just have to time the runs mm. and you know, stay on side and then yeah, the passes mm. are great. Yeah, because obviously when you, when you take it inside there, obviously that's what Rio was talking about with yeah. the calmness. It's so easily when you get a chance, you, you want to get in there quickly, maybe hit it with your yeah. left foot, but you stand him up, take your time. Yeah. I done I done that a second time. I should have just finished, uh, but you mm. know sometimes uh, you do the the bit complicated ones and it's successful. Mm. You know you know just the second goal is going to get shown. They're going to run that through. Is is that your, your your favorite type of finish when you're coming in and you're opening your body up with your right foot? Um, yeah, I'd say I'm, I'm more comfortable coming from the left side. Yeah. Um, you know sometimes I can play left wing and it's a it's a comfortable position for me. So mm. I'd say probably that that's. Mm. Yeah, that's the most comfortable one. Was this running through your mind a little bit? Because Van der Ven in the first, because you've cut back in the first one. Do you think he slows down a little bit there? You know, was that in your mind, or are you just thinking, no, I'm, I'm always going to go there and finish it? Um, I think when I have this this amount of space, you, you shouldn't make it, it too com complicated. You just go towards goal, and um, maybe because I cut inside twice, maybe he was, um, you know, thinking a bit about that, but. Just scoring, I'm happy. What about um, what about the golden boot? The oh, I was going right? to say that. Yeah, yeah. Harlan, I think we're two behind now. I mean, is that is that been in the, in your mind? Is it in your mind now? And was it in your mind before the start of the season? Um, no, not really. Um, obviously, my season has been a bit uh, it's been a bit a uh, bit of trouble. Uh, you know, with with a few injuries. So all I'm thinking about is you know staying fit and, and get momentum, which I have now. And uh, I'm just thinking of playing well for the team and that's, that's when I get my goals, when I do all the other things well. How close to your peak are you feeling now? Because as you said, you've, you've missed 10 games this season through injury, so it's been interrupted for you. Um, no, I feel like I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a good form now. Um, it's just about you know, keeping, keeping the momentum and for, for me and for the team as well. Uh, I feel like we're in a good place and just got, just got to keep going like this. Just what, uh, from a, a forward point of view and your mindset going into a game like this, Someone like Van der Ven, who, who didn't have a great game today, but he's considered a very good defender form-wise this season. You as a centre-forward, are you thinking about your one, you against him? Or is it more of a team thing you think about your approach? Um, obviously, you think about how to, how to beat your defenders and um, all of them are different. So, obviously, no, Van der Ven is uh, one of the fastest uh, 
if not the fastest, I think, uh, in the Prem. So you have to you have to think about how to beat them, and I think that's about timing. Um, you know, with that high line, and if you time your, your runs, and you can hurt you can hurt any team. Um, so. Yeah, I think, but that's I think that's in the back of your head. Mm. Seventeen Premier League goals this season. Have you got a number in mind for how many you would like by the end? You got a target? Um, no, I don't. I don't really. I don't really set targets uh, to be fair, because I don't want to limit myself. Uh, mm. But you know, um, I go into every game and and try to score, and that's that's my that's my way of helping the team. You know, so um, that's that's going to be my mentality for for all the games we have left. Well, you're. I tell you just say, he's got, he is player of the match. We've got one more goal to get to be the highest goal scorer in Swedish man ever in the Premier League. Did you know that? Slatan. I didn't, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So you've, got to, you've got to do it, man. You've got, you've got to, got to set that Zlatan. target at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Congratulations Thank Thank on the brilliant performance. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Brilliant. There are two goals today. The player of the match. How much did he deserve that award? That he's yeah, yeah, he did. I think there was a few players who probably were in the con in contention for it. But you know what stands out? He's just so calm, yeah. and like it just feels like this is a normal thing for him. He like, says he's, he's not on the inside, but that's hard to believe. Do it you think? is because his whole demeanour is that of a calm, real, relaxed kind of guy. He says obviously it speeds up inside. It doesn't feel like that, but he just looks like he expects, with his ability that he's got, he expects to be doing this at this level. I've heard so many times Thierry Henry comparisons with him, Peter. Mm. Do you see that? Well, yeah, I, I think you know he's not got the blistering pace that Thierry had, but he's got incredible feet and it's just the calmness in front of goal. How many times did you see Thierry go through on goal and, and panic? You know, I thought, not once, I don't think. And the same with you, you feel with Isak. He's just got that calmness. He's he's able to slow. He makes the correct decisions. I think if he goes through on a one, one v one, you're just always confident he's going to score. Mm. It, it is difficult though when you when you try and compare these players to those because Thierry was he was the, one of the best ever. Mm. But, but but he's he mentioned a really important point there, timing. Mm. He's timing of his runs even for the first one with Gordon there. A lot of players run offside there, mm. lose a loss of concentration again on the halfway line, knowing where the defender is, knowing he's in his own half. Those little details there sometimes say you know it doesn't need to be the quickest because upstairs he's quicker. The deserved 4-0 victory here at St James's Park for Newcastle today. Rio and Peter alongside me. We've had a look at Alexander Isak's goals with the man himself. Let's look at Anthony Gordon's. It was goal number two, Rio, and he was lively from the first whistle, wasn't he? Yeah, again, he set the tone. He, he ran through once on the right-hand side early on, but he capitalises on a, a terrible ball from, from Poro, steps inside and rifles it in that, that, that corner. And, and it's, it's an argument to say he started on the right because uh, Harvey Elliott, Harvey Barnes is in, plays on the left. But he's going to get more goals in these areas, yeah. coming off the left-hand left -hand side. He is a guy who you want in these moments. You need a little bit of confidence, you need a little bit of oomph in the stadium to, to vitalise these, these fans. He gives you that massively. Do you yes. prefer him on that left-hand side, Peter? Yeah, without doubt. You can see there, obviously, that's what he wants to do. He wants to cut in and shoot. And what Pedro Porro was doing there, I've, I've no idea, but fantastic finish from Gordon. And he took that corner for, for the fourth goal there. It was the 16th corner Newcastle had in the game, Peter. Finally made one count. They were such a threat. And I, I, I do think it's a, a problem for Tottenham um, defensively from corners. Vicario doesn't want to come. Um, it was a matter of time, I thought, today we, we, they were going to score. And I thought Fabian Scher was absolutely outstanding today, yeah. as, as you know, defensively. Right through the spine of the team, you look at him, Bruno and, and Isak up front. They've got. We talk about the wide areas so much with Newcastle, but through the spine of the team, they're so strong when those three play. He probably doesn't get the credit he deserves, Fabian Scher. He's the only player in, in an injury-hit season to have started every Premier League game for them, Rio, and he's just been colossal for them. He's been huge, and I think he would have been... A, he, you look at him and you think, listen, is he quick enough? But he's brave. I'm talking brave with the ball and brave in his positions as well. He's aggressive, he's on the front foot. There's a calm and influence around, uh, that, that he plays with as well that I, I see f flow through the team from him. And he's just grown in stature here. And I think you see him, he walks out and he's like, I am the man here. And he's a, he's a player, and I think alongside Botman, together they look really good. But even without Botman, he's really looking in, uh, a, a fantastic player. But he's someone I'm sure Eddie Howe doesn't even have to think about. And that's great for a manager. Gives you no worries, no worries on and off the pitch. You're not going to get a minimum 7 out of 10 most weeks. And he's been so consistent. Absolutely. Another clean sheet at home for Newcastle this season. That's eight in the Premier League here at St James's. It's more than any other team in the league as well. We spoke as well, Peter, before the game about Bruno Gimaraes and his importance to the team. 
what did you think of his performance out there? Uh, honestly, at times it was it was unbelievable. I thought he was uh, he's got that bit of spikiness about him, hasn't he? You know, and he, obviously he did well to avoid the booking. But look at his technique and his ability. You know, he gets back. His work rate's so good. You know, the, the, his passing range is is fantastic. Uh, you know, at times he. Um, he goes past people. He knows when to pick a pass. There's so much to admire about his game, and uh, there's a huge cog in this in the midfield for for, for Newcastle. And, you know, at times he was he was getting us out of out of his chair, wasn't he? Mm. With some Everything of the ability, some of the flicks. And, and you know, you know what? He wants the ball. I'd let Eddie Howe even want to do you want to jump in? But it, it, we're just talking about Bruno. The, the amount that he just whatever the weather, he wants the ball. And is that is that one of the best things about him? Absolutely nailed it. We talk about it all the time. He always wants the ball and when you're trying to build a team that plays good football you it might sound obvious and I'm not sure what's going on there but it might, it might <laughs> sound obvious Brazil but... v Argentina oh, there okay. we can say <laughs> well you know more than me um, but yeah in any phase even when he's marked and I think the hallmark of a modern day creator is is that uh, characteristic he's managed to navigate 11 games now without a yellow card eddie so that's sort of resets now no ban for him how has he done it because you know he likes to play on the edge sometimes well it's, it's an incredible thing so we had a meeting about it uh, he was on nine he had loads of games to go it was right at the start and i said look bruno we we need you to stay mm. away from the suspension he said gaffer i promise i will not get booked <laughs> and I, I looked at him and i thought no but he made that that promise and I, it's a very difficult thing to do because mm in a game you know you've played it can happen like that without even really uh, thinking about it but he's managed to navigate his way through that period and he's done it for the group because he knows his importance we've mm. got very limited options and full credit to him for doing it and he's shown you he can do it now as well both Alexander and Anthony Gordon after the game have, have spoken about how differently you had to play today you were talking about wanting a, a good start needing to be versatile today <laughs> what, what did you change out there and why did it work so well yeah, sorry, I was a little bit cagey before the game. Yeah, um, you said you go man for man, you said, mm, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Yeah, we did, you nailed it. Um, although I didn't want to talk too much about it. But I think Tottenham are unique in what they do and we felt we needed to change to give ourselves the best chance of implementing what we wanted to do. And also we're looking at the balance of the players we have available, trying to get them in their best positions um, to, to play well. So it was a combination of a lot of different things. I thought tactically it worked. I thought it was a really good delivery from the players. They're always the ones that deserve the, ex the praise for the execution. It's such a difficult thing to do when you're playing against elite players. You know, if you're man for man, one mistake can, can cost you. But our concentration levels were really good. And Eddie, your forward players obviously will get the, the plaudits, and rightly so, they were brilliant today. But defensively, another clean sheet. How good's Fabian Cher been? Because you know, we were talking about him today, he's just been, been fantastic for you. Yeah, this season, Fabian, we've need, really needed him. Mm. You know, around him, he's lost some big partners to injury mm. but he's been the sort of consistent in the team and he's he's been incredible on the ball I mean I know Fabi will sort of pride himself on that but then when you add there's no good being on the, good on the ball if defensively you're not at the highest level and he has and I think that's the area of, the, of his game that he deserves the biggest credit for he's been diligent his uh, positioning has been excellent his attitude to defending has been excellent and he deserves a lot of credit for his performances this season also how important are those like fringe players and the young players that you've had you've had a lot of injuries you spoke about you've had you've got players that are coming in Livermento at times have come in Jacob Murphy Anderson today the, the list goes on of players that come in and are performing and giving you sevens at least out of tens how important are they and how do you get them like that in this team well I think the emergence of some of the the, the players that maybe at the start of the season people wouldn't have thought would have played like you say um, uh, Elliot Anderson, Louis Miley um, and, you know, Jacob last season was outstanding and he's been outstanding again this year so I think he's in a slightly different category but we're seeing the emergence of some younger players that will hopefully serve us well here for the next yeah, Elliot today I think was well, excellent he's an outstanding talent, he's been trying to sort of burst into the team and stay in the team. I where, think. Where is he best? It's a good question, I'm, I'm sort of <laughs> unsure myself because he can play wide left but obviously Anthony's form Harvey's form that makes it difficult for him there but then uh, as a number eight on that left hand side but then he's got Jolinton to compete with and that's why with Jolinton's injury you're seeing him emerge and yeah he's, he's got everything really mm. And also, there, there was a, a special initiative today, a new campaign from the club as well. We, we had um, shirts that, that fans were wearing and, and sponsored as well by the, the Royal National Institute uh, for the death today as well. We saw Dan Byrne in that celebration for the first goal saying, love the fans in sign language. And there were some lovely celebrations with the shirts vibrating. How nice is that for you to see those fans being able to experience the atmosphere at St. James's? Yeah, it was an amazing touch, I think, from our sponsor, Seller. I think... Um, 
watching pre-game when the players come out with the mascots and seeing those pictures and seeing that I didn't know Dan knew sign language that's impressive um, I think we taught him that when we oh, okay. with him this week well but. yeah <laughs> amazing things and I think that's the power of football that's the, what what this football club and every football club has the power to do it affect people and give them experiences they wouldn't normally get Hopefully something that we'll see a lot more of as well in the Premier League. Just, just lovely scenes today. Eddie, that puts you into sixth place in the table now. Can you finish above Man United? <laughs> well, yeah, who knows? I mean, I, I think we just got to keep doing our bit, which is trying to win every game. Um, and I think, look, looking at how we performed today, you go, we're returning hopefully to somewhere near our best. I don't want to you know, say that for sure, but that, that, that's big steps forward in the last few weeks. Mm. And we've got to keep uh, aiming in that direction. Eddie, thank you very much for, for coming out to join well, us. Thanks, everyone. Thank well you. done. Thanks. Thank, you. thank you. What do you think, Real? Who finishes uh, higher? Well, listen, the, the form that they're, they're coming into, the momentum, I always say, is key at this stage. And I think Newcastle at the moment have that. Man United have got to answer this weekend. But he's definitely got his team in the right frame of mind at this stage, especially here at St James's. And what, when you look at Newcastle's running as well, a lot of the talk was whether they could sneak into a conference league place the way the season had been going peter but now do you think their chances of europa league are looking good well you know that's a that's a tottenham side that are going for champions league football mm. um a tottenham side with not as many injuries as newcastle have got you know there's there's a lot of key players that newcastle have missing they've absolutely dismantled them so if that doesn't give you confidence to to be able to finish the season strongly then nothing will because um that was a that was an incredible performance from start to finish they were better they were better than tottenham they didn't give them a chance to get into the game so um some great performances and as he said you know some of the with joe linton being out certain key players being out it gives other players chances and they all look like they're excelling at the moment. And a really difficult one to take Tottenham's biggest defeat of the season. What happened out there? Yeah, look, uh, fair to say, um, credit to Newcastle first. Um, I thought they were really good today and um, yeah, we just didn't really uh, get to any levels that would uh, allow us to sort of get a grip on the game and um, yeah, they just too good for us. Was the timing of Newcastle's goals a crucial part as well, scoring two in quick succession in the first half and an early one in the second? No, not really. I thought even before the goals, we uh, we weren't really... No, I said we didn't really have a, uh, a real grip on the game like we usually do. And um, I think it became a little bit of a game of transition, which kind of <clears throat> suited them more, obviously. Um, you know, that, when we, we paid the price for that. But, um, yeah, even outside the goals, I don't think... Um, yeah, our football was anywhere near the level it should be. Why do you think that was today? Why do you think you couldn't get a grip of the game? I'm sure I'll we'll have time to analyse that right now. Uh, not really sure. There was a, a fair few people discussing uh, Mickey van der Ven's unusual mistakes. It's rare that we see him make mistakes like that in a game. Was the more important thing for you as his manager the way you saw him recover in the game? No, look, I think uh, for all of them, that's the life of... Um, elite sportsman, elite footballers, you, you're going to make mistakes. Um, I'm sure he's going to make many more mistakes in his career. Like I said, it's about how you react to them and why you're making those mistakes. But, you know, I think there's, um, I think all of us as a group, um, there's a fair bit to learn from today. When you made the triple substitution in the second half, again, another rarity, we don't usually see Son come off in a match. What did you want to see differently at that point? Pretty much everything. Um, you know, it wasn't about the people coming off. It's just, like I said, we weren't really, um, we weren't taking control of the game. We, we were allowing Newcastle to kind of dictate terms and, uh, you know, uh, made the changes, <clears throat> hoping we could sort of stem the tide and get a grip of it, which we did for a little bit. But um, yeah, they're still nowhere near good enough. No game now for two weeks, and then it's the North London derby. How do you plan to use that time in between? Nothing really changes, you know. Whatever you do, we still got. Uh, we, like I said, we don't have a game next weekend, so we've been. That's been in the works for a while, so we'll just uh, you know, train and get ready for the next game. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Fifteen days to stew on that result before the North London derby. I mean, that's a big fixture in itself. But where does it leave them in the race for the top four? I mean, Ange keeps talking pla the top four down. And he might get what he wishes for, not not ending up in that top four. Because he's been um, saying it's not a priority, yeah. but it's the way they play their football. Yeah, exactly. And if they're playing their football that that way, then forget the top four. They're not going to end up in the top four if they continue to play like that. So, um, obviously, he's got 15 days to, to, to stew on this. Yeah. And the worst thing in the world is when you lose a game like that and you've been humiliated like that, 
It's because it's not just the, the, the score line, it's the way that they've played and have performed. They got outplayed for, for, for 90 minutes there. Um, so the players will be stewing, he'll be stewing, and uh, the one thing you want is a reaction. Mm. And there can't be any better reaction than playing in the North London derby. OK, well, let's, if that's the thoughts uh, from the visiting dressing room, what about the hosts? Is Eddie Howe. Buddy, how proud are you of that, that performance from start to finish? Yeah, it was a, a great performance from us. I thought the players executed everything in a really professional, um, diligent way. I thought some of our counter-attacking and general attacking play was of the highest level. So really pleased with the players. I just want to start from back to front, if you like, before talking about the ruthless attacking play. The discipline when you had the big lead, what about that? Yeah, I think combination of things, really. I think we protected the lead really well because we, we went for more goals and we were aggressive still. Um, I don't think we sat back until the last 10 minutes because I think there's probably a bit of fatigue at that stage. But generally, I just think we were we looked in a really good place physically. We were able to execute what we wanted to do. Um, and there was, um, yeah, I think everyone to a man probably performed at a very good level. Incredibly, Newcastle have now scored three more than the entertainers under Kevin Keegan of 95-96. I mean, that's saying quite something at this stage. Absolutely. Um, I mean, that's that's how he wants to play. He wants to play his game with high intensity and try and get the ball forward in the right way as quick as possible because he knows he's got players in those positions to go and hurt the defence. And when you've got that, then you have to feed them. You have to get the ball up front as quick as possible because they're the ones that do the damage. And they certainly have. Um, you know, uh, Isaac, and we've spoken about him, you know, we, was, we were early on waxing lyrical about when we played together and scored yeah. 49 goals, but I was out three months, he was out three months. Isaac's been out for a period of time, mm -hmm. still got 18 goals or, and could, could jump to the... the, the, the he's, two, sorry, he's two goals away from the golden boot, so he's an, had an exceptional... But everybody's chipping in with goals and at an important time of the season as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. <laughs> what a game. Tottenham were destroyed by Newcastle. 4-0, 4-0, wow. Anyway, I thought I should bring this here for you guys to, to listen to the analysis. I guess you guys watched the match. What do you have to say about that? Uh, do you think Tottenham were very poor or they were unlucky? Uh, put on the comment section and let us know. Um, yeah, I'm not sure they're going to end up in top four, the way things are going right now. Um, because Newcastle is, uh, is very, very close. It's very, very close to them. But I'm not really bothered about these people, though. Trust me, I'm I'm more concerned about the top three, uh, Arsenal, Man City, and Liverpool. As you all can see, uh, Man City won today. We're going to be uploading the video shortly. So um, it's crazy. So I don't know what Liverpool is going to play tomorrow. Then Arsenal needs to beat Ashton Villa. It's a must win. If you know you want to win the Premier League after 90 years, is a must win. The remaining games is a must win. You know, um, hopefully, uh, uh, Man City will drop some points and uh, hopefully Liverpool will drop some points as well. But I don't want Arsenal to drop any point. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I just I, that's that's my take though. But let's see. Tell me what do you think. Uh, put on the comment section and help us to share our videos, like our video, and subscribe to our channel. Help us to grow. Thank you. I appreciate every one of you. Take care and bye for now.